for you that uh, we'll be looking at the economy when we come. It is no longer news that uh, uh, the rising cost of living is quite disturbing in Nigeria, the poverty level in the country. In fact, we begin to sound like a broken record every time we talk about the rising cost of, um, of um, living in Nigeria. Uh, however, we have seen we have seen what seemed like um, a safety uh, safety nets, um, social interventions from the federal federal government uh, as a way to cushion to cushion uh, uh, the effect of the rising cost of living in the country. However, is these enough? Are you feeling the impact of the safety nets that the government has, uh, social safety nets that the government has put up? Uh, what percentage of Nigerians are benefiting from the, the social safety net that government has put up? Are we clamoring for an expansion of the social safety net, a more sustainable social uh, safety net uh, to cushion the impact of uh, uh, the rising cost of, um, of living? Well, Dr. Paul Alaje joins us right about now. He's an economist. He joins us um, virtually this morning. Uh, so good to have you on the show, Dr. Paul. Thank you so very much for having me. Beautiful morning to you, sir. Beautiful morning. I'm, I'm so glad that we could we could get you on the show this morning, Dr. Paul. I'm so glad I could have you on the show this Thank morning. You, sir. Um, Thank it, is, you, sir. it is no longer news. Uh, many would say we begin to sound like a broken record from the rising cost of, um, of PMS to the cost of food, uh, cost of services, cost of energy, cost of transportation. Uh, these are all the difficulties that have, um, you know, that have hit us in recent times. Uh, however, we did hear that XYZ amount of money is being saved, uh, all given to the removal of first subsidy, even though we don't have the exact uh, figures. We also do hear uh, of an increase in um, allocation to state uh, to state governors, all given to the removal of fuel uh, subsidy. Uh, Paul, I'd like to tell me how confident and how comfortable you are with the level of safety nets that have been put forward uh, by the federal and the state governments. If you could actually identify any, please let us know. Yeah, thank you once again, and good morning to everybody watching around the world. First, I must say that um, the president, upon announce, upon announcing that first subsidy is gone, we have not, life has not been the same for many Nigeria, especially for those who are among the extremely poor people. I mean, those that are poor are the extreme. And the intention of economics is to protect the most vulnerable in the society first, even though economics have not uh, said that those that are rich should not get richer. People that are rich could get richer. People that are poor should not be poorer. So that's what that's the real goal of the economy. And government is introduced to redistribute wealth. Now, when subsidy is gone, government perhaps at that time had no clear plan as to how to mitigate the effects of a removal of subsidy. That's what many people uh, grapple with today. The first thing president announced was that he was going to do for 5,000 Naira distribution. And many of us felt that will not solve the problem uh, because President Buhari did this, had this program over and over again. And rather than people come out of poverty, we keep adding about 5 million people net, as in additional 5 million people on annual basis to poverty bracket. This is not my figure. Uh, is it you can check uh, World Bank data? It's online. You can also check UNDP data. You can also check cross check with National Bureau of Statistics. These are authorities that have released data regarding number of poor people that we have. World Bank always uh, reviewed this to us in terms of net number of people that join the poverty bracket. Now, President Tinubu then felt okay, let's give about five billion naira to the subnational, referring to governors specifically, so that they can run programs at the at different constituencies. So what I've noticed is that some governors said, no, I only got two billion, I only got three billion. But in spite of all these that were given, what was seen in most states uh, from our research, from our monitoring our office, are majorly rise. And um, it seems to be the way government has responded to poverty and hunger, giving people rights to eat. And if you look at this, uh, for most states, you might see that when you share, it might be one bag of rice to 200 people. In some places, one bag of rice to 50 people. In some places, one bag of rice to 100 people. 
I've also seen that for most festive seasons, uh, the federal government through either the Senate or Federal House have also shared the same commodity rice. Maybe it was individual effort, but by and large, this is what we have seen, you know, uh, for most of the policies of government. I've also seen one of the governors in Niger State try to procure CNG, and I've mentioned that uh, this CNG will help to ameliorate poverty. But that governor have also, uh, re referring to Niger State governor, he has also uh, tried his best to uh, support farmers so that the uh, during harvest they can see major reduction that can affect the whole state. So for me, that's what I've followed up with Niger State. Lagos State is another state that I've followed very carefully. And I saw that just recently, that state launched uh, the red line uh, to move people mainly on the mainland. That's from Oyibo, I get, I guess, somewhere to Agbado. And he published the prices that people will be paying. So with this, I believe it, it, it's a way to reduce uh, the impact of subsidy. And these are real measures uh, of impacting uh, the impact of subsidy. But we did solve the whole problem, of course, the answer is no. So it's just to ameliorate uh, that impact. If you look at uh, FCT, we have seen uh, the FCT minister also you know, pushing a number of uh, projects such that uh, the distance becomes shorter for people, the place becomes better for people. He has been, you know, very vehement in terms of infrastructure. The federal government as a whole, you know, as against warning I issued to labor, I, I, I know that I spoke with you twice and I spoke with uh, your colleague, I think in an afternoon show about 12, uh, I think, uh, Madam Pique Lomo, I, I spoke with her regarding what labor must not accept, uh, 70,000 or 60,000. And I said, any amount less than 100,000, labor, labor will come back to blame itself as an, as, an, as an organization. Because with the trend we are following, I don't even expect labor to agree to a three-year a three review. I was expecting labor to say it was going to be an annual review. Why? Because the economy was not settled. So government had increased minimum wage from 30,000 to 70,000. Two states of the Federation has further pushed that minimum wage to 80,000. Now, let's look at the number. These are the things I've seen, honestly, that authorities have done. And there may be a few things I have not seen, but for most of the most of the states, as the report is breaking, we're able to gather them and put them uh, you know, together to see what the impact will be. All of this impact is transportation cost. How do we reduce it, uh, the transportation cost in the life of the people. But the question is, are these sufficient? The answer is coming in capital letter, no. Are they sufficient? And some would also ask, are they sustainable, whatever has been done? Are they also sustainable? Because for many, um, that is a huge concern, sustainability of whatever has been done. But many would also argue uh, that um, a, a, a more uh, realistic um, safety net uh, for this government is to stabilize the economy. I mean, there are still talks around the corners asking Mr. President to revisit the pump price of petrol again uh, and then and all of that. I, I don't know what your thoughts are. I mean, you saw that our focus this morning was around um, a, a, well, a city senator asking, begging Mr. President to reduce the pump price of, of fuel. Another safety net would also be uh, the, the back and forth between um, Dangote refineries and the NNPC, the back and forth between the crude for Naira. And, uh, these could have been a more, more, more sustainable uh, safety net and Nigeria would, 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 would clap at? Well, we have a lot of countries in the Middle East that are producing oil. These countries provide subsidy for their citizens. Please, you can people can do the research. Subsidy is not a crime. For those that follow me on X, I posted a couple of days back that subsidy is not a crime. Let me also say this to you. Less than 70 countries around the world have removed subsidy completely less than 70 countries. America provides subsidy on cutting farms. I was in a debate, you know, when I was uh, a, a, a in the college to study the kind of subsidy America provided. And one subsidy America give is called uh, the, the cutting farm subsidy. And I know that the push for Africa to remove subsidy has been a long one. Uh, as, as early as the Cahoon talk uh, 2000, when the Kenya representative was told to go back to his country and uh, announce subsidy removal or most of the things government is providing. Nigeria was not an exemption. But for some of us who have privilege to learn 
uh, the act of policy, especially economic policy. We have continued to advise African governments, governments in Africa, that we need to tread with a lot of caution. Removing subsidy outrightly and abruptly can never be the way. It we bring untold hardship, poverty, and deprivation. What do we think government should have done before removing subsidy? Number one, functional alternative, local refineries that has connected uh, the our oil fields to the refineries, and we have tested and simulated it such that even if home price, I mean, uh, crude oil price is $80, $60, we can give subsidy at the point of purchase to those refineries and tell them we are giving you subsidy so that it can reflect on the prices. By now, we could still buy PMS per liter for 200, 300, worst case 500 naira. And the impact on hunger, poverty, and deprivation will not be as much as this. But you see, when people read a couple of textbooks, uh, without looking at um, the implications. So economics is 